So the big question is this, how do most agents who struggle to get the information that most successful agents hoard to themselves grow and prosper without this information? That's the big question and this video cast is the answer. Welcome to Real Estate Rockstars. I'm your host, Pat Hyben. And now for the review of the day. All right, I got a review or a comment on YouTube. Yes, go to YouTube and type in Real Estate Rockstars Radio to comment on every single episode that comes out. But Kev C21, I'm assuming that's an agent named Kevin from Century 21. He says, uh, I'm a California licensed agent and commissions are not set by law. They are fully negotiable by any and all parties. It's plain capitalized language on our listing and purchase agreement. 90% of all sellers at listing appointments ask me for a discount. People may also hire no broker to buy or sell in FISBO. Also, plenty of brokers and agents will stick a property in MLS for a flat fee. Plenty of flat fee brokers. No collusion. No obstruction. Many alternatives exist in the marketplace for consumers. My commissions are negotiable from 6% to 10%. Whatever people want to pay. Don't like it? Go get a discount agent who does discount work and get your discount value. Pay peanuts? get monkeys buyers who want me to give them some of my paycheck will gladly get it provided they give me money from their paycheck first i will give them back their own money because plenty of real estate agents barely graduated high school if that there are plenty of agents who just accept any fee over a thousand bucks to do anything on any value of any home those high school minded agents feel any money is better than no money at all this lawsuit will do nothing to alter the commission landscape even if they made brokerage activity illegal it will never stop right cocaine pusher much ado about nothing big fat nothing burger learn how to put homes in escrow as an investor and get an end user to move into the house just maintain a principal position in the transaction Woo! That was a long one. Thank you, Kev C21 from California. And he was talking about the NAR lawsuit and, of course, now the Department of Justice requesting all the co-op commissions from Matrix that Matrix had to provide. Keep the comments coming, guys. I love them. And remember, I eat feedback for breakfast, so give me a one-star review if you want. Or a five-star review if you want. I don't care. And the more reviews we get, the better guests we get. So please, subscribe first and then leave us a review or wherever you're listening. What's up, Rockstar Nation? My name is Ian Lobos, and I'm a real estate agent and investor, team owner from Baltimore, Maryland. Honored to be filling in for Pat Hyben on the show today. And if you love hearing from people who have worked their way from the bottom to the top, if you love real estate reality shows, you are going to love the game-changing ideas and products on the show today. So the show today is one you're going to absolutely 100% want to listen to every bit of because how influential and power-packed my guest is today. Now, I'm going to tease you a little bit about him. So my guest today is one of the most influential real estate agents in the country, if not the world. He and his partner, David, own and operate Bond Street Partners out of the agency in Beverly Hills, California, my favorite freaking place on the planet. Mm. Listing inventory, well over a billion dollars, representing some of the most expensive real estate and exclusive clients on the planet. Our guest is ranked amongst the top agents in the country by Wall Street Journal, Real Deal, and Los Angeles Business Journal. So... I am absolutely honored and super excited to have the one and only James Harris from Million Dollar Listing Los Angeles on with us today to talk about his business, his team, investments, the brokerage, the show, and a really special platform he's got called the Pocket Listing Service, PLS.com. So James is going to talk with us about the exclusivity of the platform that's taken the country absolutely by storm, why he developed it, why we need it, and why it's changing the real estate game. 
I met James uh, a couple months ago at a Tony Robbins event and absolutely knew we had to have him on to add serious value, education, and fun to our listeners. So without further ado, James, welcome to Real Estate Rockstars, my friend. I'm so excited to have you on. Thank you so much for having me. I've never heard an intro quite like it. <laughs> Uh, thank you so much. Yeah, man. Guy like you deserves a big intro, man. You can do a lot of big stuff. I appreciate it, man. Hard work definitely pays off, but uh, great to be chatting with you today. And uh, thank you so much for having me. Yeah, my pleasure. So just bring the listeners up to speed who might not know you. Where are you originally from? What brought you to LA? Like, how'd you get into real estate? Great question. And that's probably an hour segment in its, in its uh, <laughs> I'll give you the truncated version. I'm born and raised in London. Um, I definitely wasn't a huge fan of school. Um, I often say school wasn't for me. Yeah. Uh, and you know something? I always had this eager passion to get into the business of making money in doing something I loved. And from a very young age, I was fascinated by real estate. And the second I could get out of school, I hit the pavement and started looking for my first job in real estate, which was at the age of 16 and a wow. half years of age. Wow. And, uh, I started as a junior, putting mail through the, the, the stamping machine and dropping it off to showing properties. And I had a great five-year run at a family-run business in London. Uh, I became the number one uh, salesperson within the company after my first year. And then age 21, I'd never taken a gap year, which most people do in between finishing school and starting university. So I said I wanted to travel. I came to Los Angeles for three months. I fell madly in love with the city. Yep. Um, and the, the rest is history. And uh, we'll get into how we set up the business a little later. Yeah, I love that. So I want to talk a little bit about Million Dollar Listing for your fans out there, myself included. How did that come on? How did you get an opportunity to be on Million Dollar Listing? That's a funny question. Uh, we, I was driving home one evening from work, God, five and a half years ago, and I received a call from a casting director who said that they were casting for the show. And I honestly thought we were being pranked. We've been in business for 12 months. We closed 160 million in our first year of business. People were starting to talk, but I just couldn't get my head around the fact that this could be real. So I called David, I said, Dave, I think this is a prank, but they're casting for million dollar listing. And Dave said, I love that show, I watch every episode. I was like, don't get excited because I think it's a prank. And the next day we were on a Skype interview call um, and again, I still thought it was a prank and David was flexing his muscles in the camera and we were messing around and we were joking with the person we were on the phone with and little did we know they were casting around 500 agents at the time. Wow. And we went through several of these video calls quickly realizing that this was real and before we knew it, they'd handpicked 10 cast members that they sent a full crew out with to film for an entire day. Wow. And then they edited that footage down to two minutes and it dwindled down and down. And then Dave and I uh, were brought onto the show. That's awesome, man. How has it changed your business and subsequently your life? You know, I think my life will always remain the same because I always put real estate first because without my real estate business, I can't give the show what they want and right. the viewers what they want. Um, so everyday life will always remain the same. Uh, I'm a father, I'm a husband, I'm a son, I'm a friend. Um, and that will always remain exactly as it is. Of course, it's raised our profile globally into a, into another stratosphere and sure. our business too. I mean, you know, we've become a brand and we have this incredible platform to showcase the way that we do business, the events yep. that we throw the marketing that we do, the way that we interact with clients. So it's been really great for the business. And uh, we've really enjoyed showcasing our personal and business lives for the last six years. It's been great. Yeah, I love that. What's your favorite moment from the show? Do you have one? I do. It was funny. I was thinking about it the other day. My six-year-old was on the show when she was one. So that 
it's kind of crazy that my daughters have now grown up on the show. But I think my favorite ever scene uh, isn't actually real estate related. It was surprising my wife with our five year anniversary and having rented out a movie theater and had my children show up with this surprise ring. And that was a very special moment that somehow we were able to capture on camera as a surprise. And it was a very special moment for me uh, because when we first got married, I wasn't able to get her the ring that I wanted to. And then five, year late, five years later, I was. But David and I have also done some epic deals on the show. I mean, I remember in, I think it was our first or second season, we closed three houses in the Bird Streets. Um, we sold the Hustler building on Sunset Boulevard. I remember that I mean, one. We've had some really epic moments. We'd sold Zach Vela's property for 41 million on the show in Bel Air. And so every, every, every episode has something special, but those yep. are definitely my, my highlights. So the Mommy Dearest House, that episode was really cool, man. Like putting that huge deal together. I actually drove by that uh, when I was in LA in March. And it's, I mean, it's active now. It's like active construction. It's insane what they're building there. And that was another epic episode because David's brother was involved. Right. It all came full circle. And the funniest part is, and I'm so embarrassed to admit, but I've never seen Mommy Dearest. And since <laughs> the episode has aired, I can't tell you how many people have said that they were in love with that property. So, you know, that's, that's super cool as well. So how about worst experience that you've had on the show? Like one where you, and I, I think I know what you're going to say. Like one where you look back and you're like, oh my God, how did I do that? Why did I say that? What do you think it is? Now I'm intrigued. <laughs> um, I am thinking that it's you and Josh Altman on the rooftop when you threw the drink. That's definitely one. <laughs> and I remember going home that evening and telling my wife, you're going to be really angry at me. Because I hate losing my temper. Yep. Uh, and, and you know something? This is a very real business in terms yep. of it's competitive. It's yep. cutthroat and there's a lot of money at stake. And it can get very heated at times. And I'm very passionate about our business. Sure. And I'm emotional about our business because I'm attached to it like anybody would be. Sure. Um, there's, been a, there's been several occasions I've lost my temper. I think last season... At our Arden open house, I oh. lost it completely with Josh Altman. That guy definitely gets under my skin. <laughs> uh, and so any scene with him usually ends up going wrong. Yeah, yeah. So how have you been able to balance, or how do you balance life, real estate, and the show? Because, I mean, you're a dad and a husband, and you've got to have some time for the kiddies, you know? I, I often say there's only 24 hours in a day. Yeah. Uh, and if there's one thing that I can openly and honestly admit I struggle with, it's balance. You know, okay. being able to come home and switch off at night and put my phone away for two hours, that's the dream. Um, but I'm a very hands-on controlling person. And so <laughs> in this crazy business that we're in requires a 24 hours a day, seven days a week uh, MO, I need to get better with getting home and putting my phone in the drawer and staying focused with the family and sitting at dinner and not having a phone. And those things I'm always working on because I'm telling you, the children grow up quicker than yep. you can believe. And there's no looking back. You, you, you get one chance and uh, right. they're the special thing in the world. So it's important time. Hey, real estate agents and rock stars. If you're getting value out of the content in this episode, make yeah. sure you like the video and subscribe to this channel. Also, click the little bell icon to be notified about upcoming episodes. Yeah. And I would also love it if you left a comment and shared the most impactful tips and tactics you've learned from the knowledge shared in this episode or even maybe make a suggestion requesting a topic of what you'd like to learn in future episodes. I welcome any feedback below. Now, back to the episode. Yeah, you don't, and you don't want to look back with regrets. Bank right. accounts full of cash and then going, man, my, I wish I would have spent that moment just playing some Barbie dolls or, you know what I mean? I have a daughter too and it, it's, I'm constantly thinking about that stuff. 
Absolutely. I've had my yeah. fair share of Barbie dolls, by the way. I, I've definitely had my fair share of <laughs> manicures, pedicures, Barbie dolls, makeup. Yep. But, but you know something, and I mean this, you can never spend too much time with your children. And, never. And that's, that's so important. What are, the, what are the cast members like in real life? Like, you know, honestly, no, no smoke up your butt. Like, you seem, like, as I've talked to you over the last couple of months, I don't know, David, but you guys seem pretty authentic. Is everybody pretty authentic, or do you guys turn it up for the camera? No, I think, look, I, I truly believe that what you see, David and I, is what you get. Um, we're extremely authentic. Uh, Josh Flagg, I really believe what you see is what you get. I mean, he's completely yep. nuts uh, and he owns it. That there's no hiding behind who he is. Um, I always call him an 86 year old uh, woman. And that's definitely, he is his grandma, um, but that's what you get. Josh Altman, I have to say what you see is what you get off camera. Listen, Josh is a hardworking guy and I have to respect that, but he's definitely not someone that, uh, we go out and have dinners for two with. Right. And, uh, you know, Tracy, again, is a hardworking lady. Uh, I think she's been great for the show. Um, and she's lovely. And I do hang out with her and I think the world of her. So, yeah, I think pretty much that the show portrays very accurately who we all are, I think. Yeah, I love that. Well, what is your... What type of leverage do you have? I mean, with all this stuff, we're talking about counter life or counterbalance in life. What kind of leverage do you run in your life? Like, do you have a, a personal assistants running with you or do you have people from the show that help you out with, with things? Everyone plays a part in my work life, whether it be the show or running our business. We do have several assistants. We've always kept our team lean and mean. Um, we want to keep everyone on our team very incentivized to make money and be successful. We want everyone to grow with us. We never want people on our team to feel like they're against each other, but we have amazing assistants. We have a director of operations who has been in the business for 30 years, Michelle Fakara, who runs our business, handles absolutely everything. And she is the backbone to our business and allows us to grow. Then, of course, everyone on the show uh, the, 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 the people behind the camera become like family right. you know, we're with them 11 months of the year. Um, and everyone plays their own part to ensure that each of us can be as successful as we need to be. That's awesome. Do you have to, did you have to change some things to like, you know, your brand is massively important, especially in LA. Did you have to change anything about your life when you first got into or on the show? Like, I watched a little video about your, um, your house and your closet and all your shoes are in those little green bags. Yeah. How do you know, like, how do you, you know, obviously that brand and making sure you look the part is super important. Did you have to sh shift out of what you, like who you kind of were into this major polished? I'm British. Fashion is everything. <laughs> no, you know, I, I, both David and I are blessed with the fact, at least I think we're blessed, my wife probably hates it, that we both have OCD, so everything is perfect and meticulous and clean and color-coded. But, you know, I, on, on a serious note, I run, in my mind, my OCD with how my closet looks <laughs> in the same way I do my business. And that might sound ridiculous, but everything in my life has to be organized in a way that makes sense to me. Sure. And if it's not, everything else will almost create a domino effect and fall. Yep. So the way we run our business is meticulous, it's organized, it's detail oriented, and we're running a tight ship. The same way I run my house, people may think I'm crazy, but it's always clean. The way right. I look, I feel like you have to dress for success. And if I were to walk out of this house in sweatpants and a hoodie every day, am I going to feel like I'm ready to go out and conquer the real estate market? No. But if I go out in a beautiful dress shirt tucked in with some gorgeous jeans and some nice shoes that match and my hair's done right and I feel successful and I've got some cologne on and I smell good and my car's clean and everything's organized, now I'm ready to go out and conquer whatever it is that I set my desire to be. I love that, man. I love that. As far as personal development, I know, obviously, I met you at a Tony Robbins event, so you do something like that. Do you, 
listen to podcasts? Do you read books? Do you, what, what do you do to actually grow yourself? Because your, your uh, Instagram vlog has you talking about personal development a lot. What do you do to actually grow yourself? I do. I love listening to podcasts, audio books. Um, I do attend uh, the odd Tony Robbins event. I am all about personal growth. And yeah. for me, you never know everything. And the moment you think you know everything is the moment you fail. So for me, it's all about being able to teach myself through those various platforms on how to grow. And Tony Robbins was a great one for me, purely based on fear. How do we overcome our fears? And, you know, I'm all about personal development, being able to grow as a person, as a business, as a family man. Um, and, you know, we can take away so much from, from all of those things. I love that. Do you have a favorite book or podcast or seminar? Probably Tony Robbins. Okay. Yeah, UPW is pretty freaking powerful. It is pretty powerful. And yeah. you know what? It's not for everyone. His methods are not traditional. Um, and I certainly, I can take in as much as I can take in. But the right. best thing about a Tony Robbins or any of these motivational speakers is you only have to retain the information that speaks to you. Yep. You know, you don't have, maybe that's only 10% of 100. But guess what? If you can go away with 10% and grow and take something away from that and grow, then you've achieved what you set out to do. That's right. Anything else you can share with us about the show? Any secrets or tidbits for those fans out there? I will tell you this much. We are very busy right now and we have lots of fun things to come. Love that. Okay. Let's move on to the PLS system. So I read all about it. I want, I'm just going to ask you questions. You just describe hey. everything about it because I think it's, it's amazing. I think it's awesome. Thank so you. pocket listing service. Now in LA, it's super important because you've got houses that a lot of them don't comp. They're their own comp or they're way better than the other comp by, by millions and millions of dollars. So you guys came up with the PLS to figure out how to market properties. Well, actually, you know what? You tell us. So the PLS first off came around as a platform that could consolidate information in one place to help empower brokers. And it doesn't really matter if you're dealing with a million dollar house or a hundred million dollar house. As agents, information is key. And if we have information at our fingertips, we become valuable to our clients. And right. as an agent, I probably receive 20, 30, 40 e-blasts a day with pocket listings, but you're running around, you're in a showing, you're door knocking, you're whatever. You miss emails if you're not working with that client at that exact minute. So what the PLS does is it consolidates that platform so that brokers have a go-to place to look at when they need to find a specific pocket for their client. However, the sort of number one thing for me where the PLS works for the agent community, and it's only for licensed real estate agents, is that if I'm going up for a listing, and I'm sitting in front of my seller and I've done all of my comps and the house is worth $2 million, but my seller thinks it's worth three. Right. Well, you can now use this platform off market to test that price point. And you can turn around to your seller and say, okay, we're going to try 3 million. Yeah. We're going to put it on the PLS where we have thousands upon thousands of members and let's see if we get a bite. And if we do, great. But if we don't, at least we've been able to test the price point. Because once your house goes on the MLS, you start accumulating days on market. It starts feeding through yep. to Zillow and Redfin and Trulia and Homes.com. So use this platform to test price points. And you found that has worked amazingly well in LA. And then obviously you're in other markets in the country. I saw you guys were in South Florida. How right. does that work for... You know, let's say on my market, Baltimore, you know, yeah. how does it work for somebody here um, knowing that we have comps that are pretty tight, you know, 10,000, 20,000, $25,000 apart. Yeah. You know, how does that work for us? It, the, the, the theory and model of the business and the platform remains exactly the same. Some sellers don't want their home to be on the market. Other sellers want to ask a little higher for price. Other sellers want to be more private. No matter what the reason, 
we need agents to sign up and load in their inventory for the software and platform to really maximize it. We want the right. PLS to be something that people need. So the more people that are utilizing the platform, the better. But whether you're in uh, Baltimore or South Florida or Los Angeles, the idea of our service and platform that we're providing is to share information, aggregate it into one place so that brokers can use it to their advantage, however that may be. Got it. And then so if somebody... You know, who is PLS best for? Is it brokerages or individual brokerages agents? And their agents within. So if brokerages sign up every single agent, we're going to start hitting mass markets. That's great. But the PLS is specifically for licensed agents. You have to have a BRE to register. You have to be licensed to use the service. And then the more agents that use it, the more inventory we have, the more useful it becomes. Now, can can any can it be integrated into any state, any uh, any yeah. any market? Okay. Any market, any state, residential or commercial, and I cannot tell you the number of emails that I'm getting purely off the back of people selling properties because they use the platform. I was in a showing yesterday for 16.9 million because somebody saw it on the PLS. We're getting showing requests all the time on our own listings, and it's become. For me personally, it's become a part of my pitch the second I walk through the front door. We're always telling the sellers that we're going to pre-market their property before we go on the MLS. We have a bunch of different ways we can do that, one of which is the PLS, where we're going to load your property into the platform. We're going to ask that higher number because there is no seller in the world that doesn't think their property is worth slightly more than what it is, and they just love it. So it helps you as an agent. It helps the seller because you're going out of your way to market their property before you've sure. even started. It allows you to test price points. It really is a win-win-win. Love that. And then as far as, let's say I wanted to set it up in Baltimore. How many agents do you need in the platform to make it really worthwhile? Honestly, there is no minimum number of agents. I couldn't give you a specific number, but the more, the better. And of so I hope that you'll go out and walk out of that door and get your brokerage to sign up and uh, let, let's make it big. What do you think about the word toolbox? What is a toolbox? A toolbox is a box full of tools that you use to build something great. At Real Estate Rockstars, we've created our own free toolbox. So everybody that comes on the show as a guest brings a tool with them and we plow them all into this toolbox and we give it away for our viewing audience to basically use as they wish. Everything we put in there is an actionable item that can be downloaded, can be printed, can be used immediately. And we got things like scripts and dialogues, checklists for teams, checklists to keep agents accountable, referral forms that are filled out at settlement to get referrals by your buyers and sellers. Everything you could think of that you could use on a regular basis about real estate is included in this toolbox and it's helping agents worldwide sell more houses and make their jobs a lot easier and processes much more efficient and the thing is it's absolutely free all you got to do is go to hybendigital.com backslash toolbox or text the word toolbox to 444-999 that's toolbox 444-999 do it now. Hey, real estate agents and rock stars. If you're getting value out of the content in this episode, make sure you like the video and subscribe to this channel. Also, click the little bell icon to be notified about upcoming episodes. And I would also love it if you left a comment and shared the most impactful tips and tactics you've learned from the knowledge shared in this episode or even maybe make a suggestion requesting a topic of what you'd like to learn in future episodes. I welcome any feedback below. Now, back to the episode. So I wanna ask you something specific. So we have a, um, we have coming soon here on our MLS. Our MLS is a very uh, big multi-state, right? Do you have coming soon in California as well? It just started several weeks ago. Okay. so. Obviously, when you hit coming soon, 
you're on the MLS and you're going to pop up on the syndicate sites. And then after that 21 day period, you're live. Correct. The PLS solves the problem with sometimes you're just not ready or you haven't gotten enough data or feedback to understand what that property really should be priced at or the marketing that you need to do to it. So with the Correct. PLS, it's safe. You can, do you have a minimum or maximum amount of days? So here's the good news. The MLS have clearly seen what we're doing and are right. clearly trying to run a similar program. Um, with the PLS, what we do in order to make sure that everybody's listings are active and that we have no inaccuracies on our website is every 30 days, we will send the listing agent an email to update the status of their listing. Got what it. we don't want is a whole bunch of inventory on the platform that's either sold, no longer available, already on the MLS. We want to keep the PLS true to being a pocket listing. Got so it. we are very much, and we're about to completely relaunch a brand new website, which people are going to be completely blown away by, that integrates all of those concerns so that you will be able to enter as much or as little information as you want but the whole idea here is that we're trying to bring the power back to the agents so the agents have the control whilst you have companies like Zillow who are trying to take the power away from the agent. We yeah. want to keep this as an agent to agent community that benefits agents so that they have this information at their fingertips that they can go out in the field and use. No, I love that, man. All right, so let's talk a little bit about your business. Um, that's a great question. We knew that we wanted to set up our real estate business and it really came to us as something that we had to do as soon as the economy started getting back on its feet. And when right. Dave and I set out to set up our business, we knew that we wanted to target the high end luxury market. Having said that, we didn't have a single contact in our phone. We didn't know a single person. And it was definitely going to be a very hard task to set out and complete. Yeah. We hired a very big marketing and PR company at the time to design this uh, incredible website for us that took us about six months to do, $60,000. Wow. And once our website was ready, we realized that we didn't have a single listing to put on our website. <laughs> so that made life for us very difficult, but we were so proud of this website that we weren't willing or about to stop there. All right, so I wanna get into business here. So you and David are partners, and like I said on the show, it looks like you guys are just the two of you in this little office at these little desks that are empty. So as a fan and as just a, a fan of business in general, I want to know what you guys, how you built it, how it got started, what it looks like from the back end. Well, what would our office be if all of our people were in it? They're out making money. That's true. Uh, <laughs> when we set out our business, it was crazy. We didn't have a contact in our phone. We didn't know a single person in town. We just knew that we wanted to set up our business and be successful. So the first call to action for us was we wanted to brand ourselves. And you mentioned brand earlier, and to us, brand is absolutely everything. Yeah. And the first call to action for us was designing and setting up this beautiful website that we spent $60,000 on creating. It took us six months to build. We still weren't happy with it. Once it was finally ready, we looked at each other and sort of said, shit, we don't have any real estate to put on it. Um, and so that's where the fun really began. We, we, we pounded the pavement. We door knocked every day. We sat open houses. We just went out and did whatever it took. But where our business really took off was when we found a niche in the market, which was developers were buying up dirt. And they, yeah. this is when that madness began six, seven years ago. And what we realized is that developers really didn't care who they worked with. They just wanted the deal. Yeah. So David and I started door knocking teardowns in Bel Air. And, you know, we would rock, paper, scissors for whoever was going to knock that specific door. And then we would take complete streets and one of us would sit in the car and laugh at the other one whilst the other <laughs> one door knocked. And we made fun of it. Um, and the first deal that we did was a six and a half million dollar door knock in Bel Air that we sold to our client, Zach Vella. 
who bought the property sight unseen, and that's about to be a $40 million house. Wow. So we really gravitated towards finding a niche and then going after it. In terms of building the team, obviously it just started with David and I, we're both complete control freaks. So the idea of expanding our team was always tough, but something we knew we had to do. Yeah. Um, delegating is one of the most important things in business to, to grow. That was something we struggled with. And the moment we took on our first assistant, our business was able to really grow. And we were able to focus on being out there because you are your brand and your brand is your business. And at that point, we started growing our team. And today we have two assistants, two buyer's agents, a director of operations, a whole creative team within the agency, a publicist, and it continues to grow. But I feel like in business, you, you, you have to grow organically. Yeah. You can't be forced. Yeah. Now, are you comfortable talking about your production in the last 12 months? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, in the last uh, 24 months, uh, we've closed almost 900 million in sales. Jesus. Whoa. And we're That's set been... to beat a record this year. And like you said at the beginning, we actually have 1.5 billion in signed listings. And I only say the numbers because I want anybody to listen in on this and say it can be done. Um, right. And hard work does pay off. And I think anyone that sticks with it and is willing to put in the time and work and effort to be successful, anything can be achieved. What's your biggest source of business? Like, obviously, you guys were knocking in the beginning. But like, your buyer's agents, are they doing their own business right now? Like, so our buyer's amazing. agents are, are, are going out and picking up business, whether it be on their own with clients of ours. Our business comes from all different areas, whether it be from a previous sale, from a referral, from a business manager, from a friend, from a developer. A lot of our product right now is new construction. So a lot of it's the dirt that we sold three or four years ago, starting to turn around and come back. Uh, a lot of it's repeat business. But look, we will go after any business anywhere at any price point because we've managed to build a team where we can facilitate any of that business and, and take on anything. Right. Now, how do you, uh, like, what systems do you use to keep track? How, how do you keep track of everything, man? You seem like you've got 50 million things going on and these, and clients that, frankly, they demand your time. How do you, how do you keep everything running? Honestly, it's organization. It's a great team. I really believe that choosing the people on your team is key. It's yeah. everything. You need to have key players on your team that want to succeed with you. Um, and the way that we keep organized is we have an amazing group text message thread, a group email thread. Everyone's on the same page. The left hand knows what the right hand's doing. And again, it really comes down to having the infrastructure behind you so that we can all grow collectively. And, and, and that's what a successful team does. Love it. Tell me about one of your biggest failures in business that has, that has ended up to be one of your greatest successes today. Wow, that's a great question. I think one of my biggest failures is knowing too much or okay. knowing it all. And I can't tell you where there's been a, several times in business where I've answered a question I didn't know the answer to and it's backfired. And today in business, I will look at whoever I'm talking to and say, I don't know, I'll get back to you. Yeah. And it's those simple words that people are so fearful of that will actually get you so much further in business. And so today I try and just remain true to the information that I have and use it to my advantage. But where there's something I don't know, just being able to say, I don't know, yeah. and getting back to them. All right. There's a lot of agents listening to this that are just getting into the business that are, you know, just starting to scale up. What's some information or some advice you can give to a, 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 an agent in, a, in, a, in a, an average market to just get into action, take action today to get them rolling so that tomorrow and the next month, the next month, their business looks better? My best advice that I will continue to say is try and really identify who you are as a person who you are as a brand, what you want to be, 
be creative, think outside of the box. There are so many licensed realtors in America today. What separates you from the next person? And what do you have in you that's going to allow you to become more successful than the next person? Yeah, Write right. those things down, identify your strengths and your weaknesses, be creative and go out and just make the most of this business. Because if you do, you will be successful. Yeah, I love that authenticity. And then where are you going with this business? Like, what's it look like in five years? Is it world domination? Is it 10 billion a year in sales? What's, what's the deal? This will continue to grow and it will continue to grow organically. Of course, we want to get to that number one position. We're not going to stop until we get there. Um, but for us, I'm very focused right now, staying in my lane, making sure that I work harder than ever before. But ultimately, we want to scale the business, continue growing the team, growing the business, whether it ends up moving outside of the US, we will see. Um, and eventually, you know, start buying real estate and building a portfolio and, and, and continuing to scale the business. But right now, we're 110% focused. Got it. Awesome. And you guys work all over LA County, Orange County, or do you just... We work wherever the business takes us. <laughs> right. Telling you, we work everywhere, but our, our main focus is LA County. Okay. That's awesome. All right, James, I want to thank you so much for being a guest on Real Estate Rockstars today, man. You're, you're awesome. I, I've absolutely loved you on the show and it was really, really, really amazing to learn all this stuff from you and for our audience. Like, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your time. It's absolute pleasure. It's a pleasure chatting with you. Thanks for having me on the show and I look forward to uh, catching up with you soon in the near future. Absolutely. Now listen, audience, Rockstar audience, if you want to get a hold of James, you can find all their info at Hyman Digital. Uh, dot com backslash James Harris. Another way to get the gift uh, would be go to the agent toolbox. We can get the guest gifts as well as any other gift that we've ever had on the podcast. Check it out. Agent success toolbox, which can be found at hybendigital.com slash toolbox or by texting the word toolbox to 444-999. James Harris, thanks again for being on the show, man. Keep us posted on your success. And I thank absolutely you. want to catch up with you soon, man. Thanks for being on Real Estate Rockstars. Again, thank you so much. Speaking in the future. All right, man. Take care. Bye-bye. Yep. Rockstar Nation. Thank you for listening to Real Estate Rockstars. Listen, I need a favor. If you find this free content helpful, if you find our downloadable items from each guest helpful, please, I need you to pull out your pointing finger. Yes, the one finger that points at people and hit subscribe. Yes, subscribe. The more subscribers we get, the better we look in the ratings and the easier it is to get guests like Robert Kiyosaki, Barbara Corcoran, all the players that are on million dollar listing in the different cities. All that stuff makes it easier the more subscribers we get. So please subscribe. And listen, there's a lot of places you can leave comments. There's a lot of places you can like. We're on Facebook. We have an Instagram page. Instagram page is I am Pat Hyphen. Facebook is Real Estate Rockstars Radio. Feel free to leave us comments there. The most popular form of commenting seems to happen on YouTube. Yes, for whatever reason, it's a, a very open environment. So just go to YouTube and go to Real Estate Rockstars Radio. Leave us comments there. Some of them we will read on the show. We love your feedback. So thanks, guys, and I hope you are having a great day. Oh, and also, listen, if you're going to subscribe and you haven't already left a review on iTunes, please do that too. Have a great day and thanks so much, Rockstar Nation. I really appreciate you.